let's start with, you know, why the decision was made. How did you get to this point uh, to decide that enough is enough? I don't want to rerun anymore. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a decision I didn't make or didn't take lightly. Um, I recognize the tremendous privilege um, I have in being overwhelmingly elected to be the mayor of Salinas, the largest city in the Tri-County area. Um, it's been a long time of thought and discussion with my loved ones. Um, and I think the reality, and just to be really straight up, as I always have been with people, is there's just been a, a change in direction of the council priorities. Um, I'm disheartened with the, um, the leadership um, that has left City Hall in the last three and a half years. And um, I feel like the council dynamics have been really disrespectful. One of the council members who left recently called it, quote, dysfunctional. Does that sum it up? Um, I think council member McShane and I have left for very different reasons. You know, I think a very diplomatic way of leaving office is sometimes to say, I want to spend more time with my family. Um, and that's certainly important, right? But I don't think that's the reason. Um, you know, I was elected uh, on, a, on a campaign in 2010 and 2014 and 2020 and 2022 on economic development, creating jobs and creating um, a thriving economy for our community and increasing public safety. And I would just acknowledge that I don't think those are the primary priorities of our current council. And how is this going to be? I think there's a lot of people out there who are concerned seeing uh, what's going on with the council right now, folks who live in Salinas. Um, and, and should they be concerned? What should they be concerned about uh, moving forward uh, with this current council? Well, the current council is elected by the people, right? So those are the people they've selected to, to represent um, each respective district. Um, I don't want to fault the council. Um, but I think the dynamics of the body um, are off. Um, and I think that's obvious. I mean, watch a council meeting and you'll see that, that those dynamics. Um, I've said that I feel like the tone and tenor of the council um, is contentious. Um, the, the public's um, commentary is contentious. And it's just no longer tenable for me. Changing it up a little bit here. Um, and y you took over 2020, right? Okay. Um, what, what, what is it that you're going to take away that you're most proud of uh, uh, for an achievement uh, being mayor of Salinas? Oh, gosh. Um, maybe a couple <clears throat> things, yeah. maybe. A couple things. So in my time in office, I was on council for eight years and then have served as mayor for four. Like, I'm incredibly proud while I've been in elected office to rebuild the El Gabalan Library and rebuild the police station, um, remodel downtown. And even for small things, like I got a dog park. That was one of the, the small things that I championed as a council member. Um, as mayor, I feel like I stepped in when uh, Joe Gunter had passed unexpectedly. The city was in a time of crisis. It was the middle of COVID. We had no vaccines, no city manager. Um, I've led the city through a lot of different, really big issues, flooding the death of a police officer. And I feel like I've led the city well through that. And, you know, that kind of leads into my next question here. We're talking about, uh, you know, I, I sat down with uh, Chief Felice when he when he left um, and, and talked to him about some of his frustrations. Um, when you look at the state of the police department, you look at the state of the city. Um, what do you think some of the biggest challenges are going to be for the next mayor who steps into this? We talked about the contentiousness in, 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 in the council. Uh, what are going to be some of the biggest challenges? You know, I think. Um making sure that the next mayor is just aware of everything that's going on. We're working on affordable housing, um, and we haven't really built a lot of affordable housing in the last 10 years in, in Salinas. Making sure that that gets done, that's a huge priority for our residents. Um, our police department, when I started in 2011, there were 
um, there was a need uh, and an authorization of 187 police officers for the department in 2011. And we are proposing 128 officers positions for the 2024-2025 year. Um, that number is staggeringly low for a population our size, and that worries me. And I think the incoming mayor needs to be acutely aware that when you have residents who call 911 and want a cop to show up, that we are struggling with the call volume versus the personnel that we actually have patrolling the streets. And I think that's a big concern uh, for, for a lot of folks out there, making sure that they, that they get, um, you know, uh, as far as uh, appointing a police chief, what, where, what's the progress uh, going on that? And what, what's that looking like right now? Um, you know, so we've had an interim city manager who has done an incredible job of steering the ship, um, presented a balanced budget to us. Um, Jim Pia has been with the city 40 some odd years. Um, and I think it's important to have community engagement and input and a really broad dialogue with Salinas about what the next police chief looks like. Our interim police chief, John Murray, has been with the department 27 years. He's absolutely doing a great job. Um, but I do think we have a new city manager starting on Tuesday, and it will be his task to sort of determine those next steps. Got you. What's next for you uh, personally? Are you going to stick around in town? Or are you going to be around? What, what, what's next? Yeah, I'm moving to Wyoming. No, yeah. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> Wyoming is a beautiful no, state. No, 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 no. <laughs> Listen, I, I, am, I am not a wilting flower and um, love my community, love Monterey County. I am absolutely staying here. Um, I found that, you know, being the mayor is part time. And so I've always had a full time job while serving as a council member, as mayor. And I've found that I really, that's a passion of mine, that I love serving the public. Um, and so I'm hoping to do that in some meaningful way. There's no evil plan. <laughs> um, and I don't know what that looks like, but I do feel like that's really important to me and whatever my next step is, is serving the public um, and making sure that I'm here and active in my own community. I'll go walk a dog for the SPCA or you know, be on the air show board or something like that. When you look at the current state of the city of Salinas it, as a whole and, and being mayor since 2020, what is your biggest concern when you look at it? Mm. Um, stability of leadership. You know, and I recognize that I contribute to that, right? So um, my biggest concern there, I think, is just creating some stability. And I think with a new city manager, that will help. I think with the hiring of a police chief and November elections, that will help. Um, but it's really important to make sure that there's stability in the people that are executing policy and stability in um, you know, the actual implementation of policy. And if I'm sitting at home watching this and, and hearing you say that, uh, why is that so, so important for the, for the folks of Salinas who live here? Um, you know, when you have a lot of turnover in any organization, like at your job, right, that creates some level of um, difficulty in execution of whatever you're trying to get done. Um, I would say that, to be very clear, the city staff has been phenomenal. Um, but I do think that the city deserves stability, and I recognize my departure does not contribute to that. Um, but I think with a new mayor and a new city manager and um, the hiring of new staff and perhaps, you know, council, that the city has um, a brighter future to look towards. Knowing that you're, uh, you know, you're not going to seek re-election here um, and, and, and after serving your time here, I guess what would your message be to the people of Salinas as, as you move on? What would you like to say to them? Um, it's it's been an incredible honor and privilege. Like I, I made the, the comment that when I came in, I was gonna write a book called Mayoring Through Crisis, like all the time, because it was just back to back to back. You know, we had, we had the pandemic, we had the death of J.D. Alvarado, we had the Taylor fire, which threatened 1,400 jobs in our community. We've had flooding, the, you know, it's, 
it's been <laughs> one of everything. Um, and I have um, really tried to serve our community well. And I'm very proud of um, the work that we've done, the work that I've done. Um, and I would just say it's been an honor and a privilege to be the mayor of Salinas. Do you think there's like one or two council members that's really bringing the whole thing down without naming names? Um, I mean, I'm not really at liberty to like point fingers. It's not about, it's not about individuals. It's about the city. So what would you say to the council as you depart? I feel like residents um, have been really remarkably engaged and I would encourage them to stay engaged and to pay attention and to understand what's going on in their backyard. Um, you know, the, the, the difficulty of national politics sometimes trickles down into local politics. And um, I think it's really important to keep clear eyes about your community and to make sure that you are serving your community um, and that residents stay engaged. What else would you like to say? Anything else that you would like to point out you feel is important? Um, you know, for me, one of the things, there are a lot of people sort of in the shadows of um, what goes on in a city. And I would just give honor and credit to our interim city manager and our city attorney who are consistently um, working to keep the city going. Um, city staff works incredibly hard. I've gone through the halls of City Hall on a Sunday afternoon and there are employees there working. Um, it's making sure that seven days a week we are operational and serving the public. And we absolutely do that.